So, with all of this talk of the probable cause affidavit in the Idaho 4 Brian Koberger case not being the real probable cause affidavit, um, there's all this conjecture around it. Like, there's people saying that that means the probable cause affidavit could have way more evidence in reality. And this is just Brett Payne's statement. Um, there's people saying, you know, it's just an exhibit. We haven't seen the real one. It's sealed and all these things. So I was like, okay, let's go back to the basics. What is a probable cause affidavit anyway? Does this meet the requirements of a probable cause affidavit? Um, is there always a PCA needed? Um, PCA short for probable cause affidavit. Uh, is it always needed? Like what? Why, like, why is it so confusing here? You know, the whole Idaho four case is honestly confusing though. <laughs> okay. Let's just be real. But like, this is one thing that should be pretty straightforward. You would think, right? I would think so. I would think so. So what is a probable cause affidavit? Well, I have a few different definitions here pulled from various areas. One long and complex, another or the others are not so complex. Um, an affidavit is a written statement made under oath. Okay, yeah. It's a summary of the evidence against the defendant or better explained as the officer, the arresting officer or lead investigator's opinion, summary of what their opinion of the evidence is. Mm -hmm. Also, you know, it's a statement made under oath at the, at the same time. Um, and then also here, I have a more complex legal definition that the probable cause affidavit is a sworn document accompanied by an oath and designed to eliminate the requirement of an officer to be present at initial appearance. Probable cause hearings and diminish the need for the judge to appear after hours for a probable cause hearing. The probable cause affidavit shall be used to document probable cause and list in detail all elements of the defendant's crimes for which he or she stands accused. The affidavit is a legal instrument to be used contemporaneously with the arrest and incarceration or booking of the arrested person. Yep. Yeah. So usually we have probable cause affidavits to establish probable cause for a search, seizure, or arrest, right? And that's given to us by the Fourth Amendment because you cannot arrest somebody without probable cause. Well, probable cause, there's a spectrum for this. And I had never seen this before until I started looking into all of this, um, which hoping you can put the picture up on the screen and editing, but this is the legal, legal standard spectrum. 0% all the way at the end of the spectrum is no suspicion. 25% is reasonable suspicion. 50% is probable cause. And then 75% is clear and convincing evidence. 100%, which I heard a lawyer explain this should be more like 95%, uh, beyond a reasonable doubt. Probable cause is literally 50-50. It's you have a little bit more than a suspicion. Like it's more, it's probable that this person did this and it can be it's based. It's literally an opinion. It is. Yeah. So it can be direct observations that give you probable cause. It includes sensory, like seeing, touching, taste, smell. Okay. Mm -hmm. Our sensory things of law enforcement. It has to be more than a hunch. Requires objective facts and support. But that's where the issues come in because we talked about this exactly when it has to do with the court. And the court uses the probable cause definition in the same standard that the police use it. So um, the uh, whether it's a hunch or probable cause, there there is nothing defining what is a hunch versus what's probable cause. They're both opinion. They are both the same thing. They are both subjective. Yeah. And they can kind of have wiggle room with those objective facts when they're well, making yeah, an arrest. Because yeah. it's a hunch. Yeah. Or probable cause. 
Yeah, but it says it has to be more than a hunch. It requires objective evidence. But we we all know how it ends up working out, okay? Uh, in a lot of situations. Um, objective evidence isn't a smell, by the way. That is but subjective You know what's evidence. funny? is It says direct observation with more than a hunch requires objective facts. But then in the second category that I'm looking at, it says... Hearsay testimony is also enough for probable cause. Why, yeah. This becomes hugely problematic as it often is a game of telephone, of course. That's um, exactly. There's three levels of reliability with hearsay, which is citizen informants, police, um, and they are presumed reliable, and criminal informants who have a special test for reliability. I. I know we we literally use this exact definition and it blew me away when we were talking about it in relation to the court absolutely blew me away yeah. and uh I I it hasn't changed when looking at it from the perspective of an arrest either you know what I mean it, it's it's the same it's it's ridiculous Mm, I agree it's with you. It's unfair. Mm. It's subjective. It is moldable. And and anytime we're talking about someone's innocence or guilt or uh, having to do with the justice system, we need to minimize those things, not create situations where we can maximize them, especially when you have a militarized police force because like we talked about on the Baltimore video and a few other videos, uh, the, the war on drugs created a more militarized police force nationwide. Now, pair that with probable cause and its leniency. Whew, that's terrifying stuff. When I was looking up probable cause and probable cause affidavits, I did come across many arguments and papers written on why probable cause isn't enough anymore and that actually in history it wasn't enough mm -hmm. we have made it enough now when in the past it wasn't enough um and there's a, a lot of arguments arguing that it shouldn't be enough uh, for an arrest or because you need probable cause when there is an ex a reasonable expectation of privacy. So if you are going to violate that person's reasonable expectation of privacy, you need to have probable cause. Well, some people believe probable cause isn't enough to violate somebody's privacy. I don't. Yeah. I don't. I don't think that's okay. And look, it it is such... It's such a hard topic to like define because the problem with it inherently is that everyone's definition of probable cause is different. So do I think probable cause in uh, functionality could work to where you don't have to change, you know, all these laws and expectations? Sure. I think probable cause could work. However, we need to put a very hard definition on that and create uh, a definition around there must be a minimum amount of objective factual data that can prove that there is more than a hunch here. Smell, taste, that's not one of them. There needs to be a scientific unbiased test, at least one, for there to be probable cause, in my opinion. I think it depends on the situation. Like if you are pulling somebody over and the officer really does, you know, smell alcohol, but can't see it, then I think they do have probable cause to search the car and check. So, okay. That's, that's different. That is, uh, so I agree with you. I think that that gives an officer probable cause to search. I do not think that gives an officer probable cause to arrest. Agreed. I think that you should then be given a choice. A breathalyzer. Look, I smell alcohol. I don't see alcohol in the car after the search, but it is very clear. So, you know, you have one of two options here. You can either choose to do the test and breathalyzer. Uh, and then if you pass, you can be on your way. If not, you know, uh, or 
you can choose to be taken down to the station where we will administer it or you will be charged for not uh, complying with the law, you know? Yeah. 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 But um, when somebody's refusing, maybe, I don't know. Never mind. This is kind of going off on a tangent. But yes, the, the first step in anything relating to a cop looking into you should is it's the standards probable cause. Um, and I mean, that's not really the point of this, but it is an important topic um, because PCAs are written to get that warrant or, you know, search warrant, arrest warrant. Um, I also saw that I... One thing that I thought was kind of confusing that I haven't quite figured out yet, which if you guys in the comments can let me know, when I Google probable cause affidavit, I see a lot of places saying that it's needed for a warrantless arrest, but there's probable cause affidavits in cases where it's not a warrantless arrest, I thought. So like, that's something I couldn't quite figure out. Like, is it only for a warrantless arrest? Cause mm -hmm. I, Yeah. I think so. I think uh, a prob I think a PCA can be used to gain a an arrest warrant, but um, I think that it can also be used to detain until you can get an arrest warrant. Yeah, I so thought so. I thought it could be used it, for both. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm pretty sure. I mean, that's that's, that's what I thought. But that's I was assumption. getting confused looking at that specific thing. I was getting kind of confused on Google. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. here's a good example using the Idaho 4 and the Brian Koberger case. And I mean, you can look at a lot of cases, a lot of the really big cases like Watts and... Uh, his was a uh, warrantless arrest. Correct. Yep. Yep. But when you're looking, what's important is when you're looking at the arrest and the search, okay, a lot of times they will use the, the, the one PCA exhibit evidence. It doesn't, it can have all the, all those names or any of them. Um, but it, it's a statement from the lead investigator, like you said, uh, swearing under oath, essentially, that all of this is true to the best of their knowledge to provide this arrest or to provide this search. Then the judge looks at it and will sign off on that. But if there is no judge, I believe that that PCA can work for a detainment until there is a judge. So. Well, I have here, which I don't know if it's the same in all states, but usually with a misdemeanor, it needs to be about like 24 hours is your deadline to get that PCA out. And if it's a felony, it's 48 hours that you have to get that PCA out mm. after arrest. Um, but the PCA obviously gets reviewed by a judge and they determine if there's legitimate probable cause. Um, and then it becomes public record and it's never looked at again. It just becomes public record for the public. It's never looked at again. What but comes even out? If they're wrong. What comes out months later? No. If 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 it's legitimate, okay. is what I said. Okay. If it's not legitimate, obviously you get let go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or but you're what about that to. record? Because those records could be uh, an issue for people. I think. You know what I mean. Well, I don't know how that works. They, say you have like a corporate job or something like that, and. Uh, I doubt it. Somehow you have some kind of connection to some major drug lord, just a random connection. Like they helped you change a tire on the side of the road. You know what I mean? Um, so you got arrested because for some reason, law enforcement made a mistake and they thought you there was an actual connection to this drug lord and they search your house and stuff like that. But you work in corporate America where image is very important. Um, even that could mess that mess with that. You know what I mean? Especially if you're working with like big time, big shot corporate, uh, corporate, the, the top 100 Forbes, 100, 500 list, things like that. Uh, those things matter. Sure. So I, I was just curious because I don't know. I I assume it's public record forever unless you get it. I don't know. Unless, maybe if it gets thrown out and it's considered not legitimate, maybe it goes away forever. I don't know. That would be um, nice. But I, I have no idea. Um, so what will come out usually within a few months is an offense report. The okay. offense report is very detailed and it's what prosecutors review to decide what they're doing 
It's the okay. offense report that prosecutors use, not the PCA. Um, because, like I said earlier, the PCA is a summary of the officer's opinion of the evidence against the person. I mean, that's that's a so, that's an entire investigation. That's an entire case. You know, that's part of the reason why no. we touched on like objective or subjective facts, laws, theories, uh, it's and, all of and the hypotheses. Ev- it's a summary of the evidence against the defendant only. Yeah. So it's not the whole case, it's, but it's the offense report is much more detailed than the PCA is. Okay. But PCAs, like I said, Indiana's trying to make their PCAs more inclusive because normally a judge, when they're establishing probable cause, is only looking at a PCA. And they think that I've heard the I've heard it on uh, the defense diaries where they were talking about how they think exculpatory evidence should be included in PCAs, uh, um, dude. And if you're agreed. having a judge just look at this to make a split decision, should this person be arrested or not? I agree, man. I, I think, think that's all, amazing. I think when available, all the evidence should be put in there. I don't like the manipulative tactics of our justice system when it comes to criminal and court. I, I heard a defense lawyer saying that I hate usually that. the PCAs, unfortunately, do contain a lot of like them puffing it up and Which is you know so ridiculous and and almost like basically lying um but he said thankfully it be just nobody ever looks at it again and they look at the real <laughs> stuff after that but i'm like i don't know i don't know if what i about think that's okay like if it's determined somebody lied in a probable cause affidavit like i get having enough evidence to continue charging that person but i don't know like that they should be in trouble. Yeah. They should be in trouble for that. What about a situation like what's going on in the Idaho four case where, okay, so you expect nobody to ever look at the PCA again. However, you're not handing over the actual evidence for the defendant over a year in, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Problematic in my opinion, like that's major problems. There are issues there. Yeah. And I mean, the PCA does include the main allegations always should include all the main allegations, um, which is what I have been arguing for a while is that it absolutely includes the main facts of the case, the main ones. Now, could there be other little things they got, especially after in their investigations after arrest? Uh, Yeah, for sure. There's going to be other things there, but Unless they found some groundbreaking geolocation background app data, I don't know that there's going to be much. Yeah. Um, But um, one thing that, so I wanted to actually look at the Koberger PCA and then look at another PCA and compare them. So, you know, what's really interesting is we're looking at the uh, affidavits for Pennsylvania tonight with my story. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, this is a good episode to do it then. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so when you look at this, af- this affidavit, because that's what it is, even if it says exhibit, um, because an look affidavit is a statement. Yeah. Affidavit of probable cause. Yeah. Generally, every probable cause affidavit I see looks more like that yeah. or even in Idaho here we have um major uh, a Kaler his clearly says affidavit in support of warrantless arrest um there is i'm detective Justin Klitsch being first duly sworn and state that i'm the same person whose name is subscribed to the attached criminal citation felony like it states all of these things at the beginning, like saying, mm-hmm. I am this person. I swear this. Um, usually there's a better title than what we see in the Idaho 4 one. And then at the end, they say they declare under the penalty of perj- perjury pursuant to the law, you know, all that stuff, the code, whatever. And then they sign it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, so. So hold on, I'm trying to compare and I want to go, I want to make the point linear, like in a linear fashion 
Uh, even Jeremy Best, his is the same thing. Probable cause declaration. I am this person. I swear this. These statements are true. Uh, same thing. Signed at the bottom saying I declare whatever. Well, actually, this one doesn't say that, but I think he says it in the beginning, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but anyway, going back to the Idaho 4 one. Now, this one may say Exhibit A, Statement of Brett Payne. But it does explain who exactly he is, like the other ones. It says, I am this person. I work, you know, at this police department. This is my title. I've been here this long. This is my experience. It doesn't go into those other details, like of swearing and stuff in the beginning, like a lot of others do. But at the bottom, it says, I declare under penalty of perjury pursuant to the law of the state of Idaho that. The foregoing is true and correct, and it is signed Affiant Brett Payne. Yeah. What does Affiant mean? A person who swears to an affidavit. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, what is a probable cause affidavit again? The arresting officer or lead investigator's summary of the evidence against the defendant. That is a probable cause affidavit. So, based off of those criteria, and it also being attached to every warrant, is it not the probable cause affidavit? Yeah, I mean, I've been saying it from the very beginning, and and what I was going to say for the Pennsylvania one is that the heading is just a lot cleaner, and it has, you know, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, affidavit of probable cause very clear uh docket number issuing authority police incident tying to this right when you have evidence warrant control number and then it says probable cause belief is based upon the following facts and circumstances so yeah i i agree i i understand how people are confused here okay i i don't I don't want to shut down the possibility of there being some kind of other affidavit or something like that. Uh, yeah, it's possible. And, and I want to be willing to accept people's theory of that because we want to accept every theory here at Thought Riot Podcast and look at it objectively, regardless of what it is, right? To see if anything supports that. Um, this case is so strange and so weird and so out of the ordinary uh, along with gags, along with seals, along with everything else that we have going on. I understand how people are coming to that conclusion. I know we've talked about this a couple different times. Um, but uh, based on the fact that that's legally used in all these different places, like you said just a minute ago, that is too good of evidence that this is the PCA. It doesn't matter if it says Exhibit A. That, that doesn't matter. Clearly on Pennsylvania's here, it, it includes police incident numbers so that you can attach additional evidence to this. Theirs just looks different, and it might be one piece, which is the PCA, yeah. because Brett Payne is the lead investigator, and anything else from the other officers will be part of it in a different way. You know? Do you know what I... Here is here is what I believe is going on here, okay? And I have a, a question, like an, a Q&A thing from a lawyer um, who somebody asked, what's the difference between an affidavit and an exhibit? And this person said, a affidavit is a written statement made under oath. An exhibit is a document or tangible item that is either attached to a court filing or given to the court during a hearing. An affidavit can be an exhibit, usually um, to something filed in court and not presented at a hearing because of the hearsay rule. So here's what I think is going on here is that Brian Koberger was not in Idaho when he was arrested. Yeah. He so was. Brett Payne is not the arresting officer. He's the lead investigator of the MPD, Moscow Police Department's investigation and case against Brian Koberger. So, knowing he is going to be arrested in other states, not in Idaho, I believe this affidavit was created to be attached to Brian Koberger's arrest warrant. 
in Pennsylvania. It was made to be an exhibit from Idaho of their evidence, their basically PCA, to be an exhibit to attach to his actual arrest warrant. That is not in Idaho. Yeah, I think you're on to something there. I really do. Um, because, uh, you know, it, it's attached word for word. However, I will tell you that there are some changes in it. Um, like uh, they obviously sealed a page. They removed the driver's name, whereas in Pennsylvania they didn't. Uh, they changed uh, Bethany Funk's name and Dylan Mortensen from Mortensen and Funk to DM and BF. Uh, yeah. Little minor changes like that. However, I do believe that it was submitted as an exhibit to attach to their affidavits here or um to yeah, their affidavits warrants. and warrants in Pennsylvania because they knew he was not going to be arrested in Idaho. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's why they labeled it an exhibit to send it over there to attach to all of these things. Um so I believe it is the PCA from Moscow Police Department for their investigation, their summary of their investigation and their evidence against this person to have him arrested in another state. Yeah, I think that's really good evidence. And with as many times as we've talked about this, I feel like it could be case closed here. However, it's really important for everyone to understand, too, that like this is a rough outline of what they have legally speaking. Okay. I'm not talking on a personal firsthand basis. Like I have, you know, some kind of connection with the police here. Um, but, uh, legally they should be showing up with the objective evidence and facts to back these claims. Yeah. So, um, is there enough in this exhibit to offer probable cause that is going to be the question i i think that no matter how many times judge judge and i don't i don't want to put judge judge down i i think he's doing an okay job uh as a judge in this case but uh no matter how many times he like denies the request to be thrown out or anything like that i think there is a real argument from ann taylor in this case that unless they have real, objective, actual, factual evidence to back these claims up in the arrest warrant. The only thing, the only thing is the DNA evidence. Literally the only thing. If that DNA wasn't in that arrest warrant, I personally believe that a lot of judges would not sign off on it. I just reread the entire <clears throat> PCA again, and I'm... I'm blown away even more at just the cell phone information. The fact that, you know, they, they claim that they were, they knew where he was from the 12th. And like, it, also it's that the shortest, the shortest part of the entire affidavit is the part where he's actually supposedly allegedly at the house committing the crime. That is the literally most generic, like, obfuscating like trying to not talk about it you know like it's i so, agree it's so weird like it's the least amount of evidence in that entire thing is like the part that actually matters it, it it's really weird it feel manipulative it makes it feel it makes it gives people a reason to question this entire thing because there have been so many different things adding up here and i think that there's multiple different reasons we're having this come out in the way we are right now. Number one, you know, as we've said a million times before, they just weren't expecting a case of this size. Number two, they weren't ready and or experienced for a case of this size. Number three, they have for a very long time, based on all the cases that we've looked into that are all questionable from that week prior, um, they have leaned on their ability to have unfettered power. In uh, I in Idaho and uh, their ability to control jury and the justice system in their favor, and now 
this is their accountability. They're being called on those things. Now they have to show up. Yeah. And I don't think we're seeing that. I don't think they're experienced and prepared for that. And I think that's what we're seeing. Yeah. I think, I think you could be right. Um, in but a, in a perfect world, the PCA would have all the evidence because the prosecution is there to prove his guilt without a doubt to the general public and which is a representation by the jury. Um, there's no reason to hide and manipulate and like, oh, don't let the defense know our approach. No, what are you talking about, you fools? You're the one proving his guilt. So you lay it all out there and you do your absolute best job to convict somebody if you believe they're the suspect. And then you let go of it. You have no more power. That's how it works. The people have the power. And I just don't think Idaho is used to that. No, I don't think they are. Um, but anyway, I I felt like I learned enough digging into what a PCA is and how they work to get that understanding of, oh, okay, so he's not getting arrested in the state. They have to send this document over to get an arrest warrant for him to be extradited. Like, it just makes sense now. And maybe Moscow isn't super experienced with something like that. So they didn't write it to the standard that other places do. I don't know. Like, maybe they just don't do it the standard way because they have never literally ever done it before. You know what I mean? I do. And, but it makes sense. Like... An exhibit is something that's attached to an affidavit, a warrant. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's attached to all of these warrants and affidavits. And it's an exhibit. And it's the lead investigator's summary of the case. Yeah, it's yep. his affidavit. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I, it, I believe 100% it is the real PCA. And then learning that PCAs are basically thrown in the toilet usually. And then you read the criminal offense and all of that stuff matters more. Um, what is the point of a bait and switch? There's literally no point. You guys are going to write up a criminal offense anyway, which is supposed to be way more detailed. I 100%. Yeah. So there's literally no point in them doing that. Mm -hmm. Probable cause is like a joke. I agree with you. I think it needs to be done away with in our justice system. So meaning like their probable cause doesn't even have to be that good. It doesn't even have to no, be. No, that's what it's opinion. No matter how you slide it, because that's not defined from hunch to probable cause, that means everything in between there is opinion. If something's not defined, that leaves room for interpretation. Interpretation is another word for personal opinion based on your experience, your past, and your nature. You know what I mean? That's, yeah. That's it. And, and it's absolutely insane that we leave that much leniency to be used to take as somebody's a life conviction away? tool. Yeah. Yeah. It, well, to literally take someone out of their life and throw them in jail. And going through the court process, which is hard, especially if you were innocent, like think of all, you know, it kind of drives me insane. I'll just mention this and then I'm going to close it out for this topic, but it kind of drives me insane. I people, I see people saying, well, what is the benefit of the cops to frame Brian Koberger? Like, why would, you know, ISP go along with it, MPD go along with it? Like, okay, I don't know. But the fact of the matter is is that a ton of people have been framed. Why don't you go ask those cops why they did it? Go ask the cops that framed Christopher Tapp why they did it. Because I couldn't tell you why they did it. Even after reading the whole story, I still have no idea why they did it. I don't know. Yeah. There's, But it happens. And it happens a lot more than I think people that ask things like that, a lot more than they think. It does. I'm not saying it's common and it's happening everywhere all the time, but 
if you think like, why would they ever do that? Well, go research some exoneration cases. Go research people who have been framed. I don't think it's a diamond in the rough, a needle in a haystack like a lot of people like to think it is. You know, oh, that's that's the minority. That's the one off situation. Uh, I think it happens a little bit more than one off uh, or the minority. I think there is a very serious percentage uh, and I would assume it's right around, you know, 10 or close to it. Well, the Innocence Project says it's between five and six percent, I believe. Okay, that. They would know better than I would, so um, I'll go with that. But uh, still, that's a very serious percentage. They think it could be higher, though. That means five or six people on the low scale uh, out of every 100 are being impacted by behaviors uh, like this from officers like this. And that is way too high of a percentage, way too high of a percentage. And it's interesting that they say it's five or six. Uh, They believe it could be higher. But then you have uh, government systems that check it, eh, you know, once a decade, just because we have some extra time on our hands are saying that the the percentage that they see is point zero 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 two. I know. Whoa, bro. I know. Please. No, I think um, the statistic I know you're talking that was your corruption statistic that we found randomly. But um, the exo- like the innocent, actually innocent being convicted, and you're innocent. I don't know why I'm like messing up that word right now. I did see a t- statistic where somebody said it was one percent. There was some agency that said it was one percent, and then all Maybe the other there's... innocent projects and all kinds of things were saying no. It's like five or six percent. Yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. It's not 1%. (laughs) I mean, look, I would love for it to be 1%. However, if we don't believe it's there, it's our job to speak up, you know? And it's interesting because uh, I've noticed that, especially in YouTube, right? We we get, oh, dude, we get five to 10 times our views um, on other platforms than YouTube. But On YouTube, when we talk about like police corruption topics, um, you know, our videos don't meet the criteria of uh, the uh, whatever algorithm. algorithm. Um, And that's interesting, right? Um, Even though these are real problems that are that's impacting us real people in the U.S. And these are real things we should be talking about on a regular basis. Because we care about police, because we want our police officers to be trustworthy, because we want our systems to be worthwhile systems that we can depend on and believe in. Um, So, yeah, it's just interesting that those things get throttled in that way when, shoot, if I worked at YouTube uh, or Google, um, I would be like, if you're talking about fixing our systems in a proactive way like these videos are for sure going to get seen you know yeah and um you know i talked about like police trust like public trust in police and everything in a past video recently and i think that um it's important it's really really important that we trust these systems but we're not going to trust them as long as police are getting offended at us holding them accountable and scrutinizing them and pushing the public off and insulting them for trying to keep them accountable because that's what we should be doing. We should be scrutiny is not what causes public distrust. It is police not willing to be open and transparent and be a part of the community, like a part of it, not just the authority over it, but a part of it. Um, But yeah, uh, I would really like to know what you guys think about my theory with the PCA. Um, If you think that I could potentially be correct, that it's an exhibit that they, it's an affidavit that they wrote and labeled exhibit so it could be attached to all of these search warrants and everything since Brian Koberger was out of state and they weren't going to be the ones arresting him. Um, You know, or if you have another theory, uh, if somebody else that's like a legal expert has already stated this, I have no idea. I haven't heard anybody talk about this. I kept looking and looking like, why am I not seeing like lawyers or cops or anybody who like normally talks about these things talking about this? You yeah. know what I mean? Maybe I missed it, but if they did, great. Um, if 
But like I said, if you guys have, have any more information or you've thought about it and dug into it and you think I it could be something different, please let me know in the comments because I really want to know. It was driving me nuts. I needed to understand. <laughs> yes, yes. Leave a comment.